in uh, dairy farms because this mu uh, milking equipment they make work easier for the farmer so as we came so that we can bridge that gap because there was that gap in the market There are many different types of milking machines available in the market. Matthew enlightens us on the types of machines he uses in his farm. We have uh, different types of milking machines and also our systems, let me uh, say that. We have, let's start with the smallest, then we go up with the, uh, although we are going to showcase all of them, we have what we call portable. Portable milking machine is uh, the one you can push around. It's or you drive around or you, you just move to where the cows are. Those ones are for small scale farmers, one to 10, 10 cows to 20 cows, or let's say even zero cows, you can start with it because you can prepare in advance. So if you have one to 20 cows, you need a portable milking machine. The portable milking machine has two types, a single bucket and a double bucket. So you can, push a single bucket you can also if you have one to ten cows you need a single bucket it does 10 cows per hour the milking it, it takes an average of five minutes so if you, you are small scale you need that portable single bucket then we have a double bucket which you can push around we are going to show it around then we have what you call stationary those ones you don't you they cannot be pushed around they are installed in a specific place. A milking machine has different components. So we have the vacuum pump and the milking buckets or milk meters or everything. So you install the milking pump in, in a specific place, stationary place, then you do pipings, you install it to, to where the cows are. So if you have from three cows, from three cows at the same time. For example, if you have like 30 cows, you need a three bucket because they'll, it will do to start cows within one hour, including excess time, it takes an average of five. So what you, you need is that stationary milking machine, which it ranges from three buckets and above. You can say three, four, five. You you put five cows at the same time. Then you wait. Once they are over, other ones come. So you you exchange like that. From they are also called. Pipeline because we do pipes all around, so you you you, you cut the, the the pressure or the system goes with vacuum pressure to the to the where the cows are. The the other ones are large scale. For example, if from three buckets four five, up, uh, three buckets is thirty cows, forty cows is four buckets, fifty cows is five buckets at the same time. So from fifty that now we go to large scale, which we have automated milking system. We have semi-automated and completely automatic systems. Semi-automatic is where we we involve uh, the farmer to to do several things. But the milk, uh, the machine has advanced features. For example, it has a milk meter. So once the milk gets from the cow, it goes to a milk meter, then it automatically is pumped to a milk cooler. So it's automatic in that only what you, do, you need to do is just to insert the, the cow, the, the head the, from the feet of the cows to, to the machine. The, the other system, you, you'll just get milk in a cooler. So we have several, we have installed several in Kenya. So you just, there's the, 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 well, the milking machine, once it is set, it goes to a collection unit. Then that collection unit is also a milk meter. Then from there, if there is a pump, it's pumped to a big cooler. That is semi-automatic because you need. The other one, uh, we only bring on order, it's called completely automatic. It's, uh, uh, you never get to, do, to see milk anywhere. Once you, uh, the, it's like robots which do the milking. Because uh, this technology we have imported from Israel. Eh? So you just enter the, 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 the once the cow, we, as I mentioned, we also have cow software. So there's an ID for the cow. Once it enters the milking parlor, the system detects which cow it is. Then the system, once it detects, it, it sends to a system, to your computer. 
that cow number seven is in the milking parlor. So it, it does, it also sends the number of liters the cow has produced, whether it has my status, because the, the, the system is able to measure pH of the milk and so many other things. So that one, once the cow, you, uh, you insert the cow's teeth, there's no, you will not see milk again. It will go to, to a milk meter, which is completely automatic. It goes to a cooler, then to a packaging machine, so you get a finished product. So uh, it depends on how many, if you are small scale, you have all categories, small scale, large scale. Uh, so that is the category of milking machines. So we have up to completely automatic together with we link with the software. So basically that is for milking machines. Considering how many farmers turn to them, milking machinery are bound to have numerous advantages that allow dairy farmers to operate effectively while optimizing profits. Several, we have many advantages, but I'm going to mention just a few. For example, the first thing is you save time. The machine does average of five minutes per cow. So, because we lack I can add on cleanness, you have two things. You have to control the system because it's cleaner, so they, there will not be uh, diseases from the cow because it's more clean. So it gets you clean milk. Another advantage, which is one of the reasons why we came into the market, is hiring a farm sitter. In this generation, we don't have experience and also it is very difficult to get a person who will do milk your cows well. So once you get a milking machine, you, it's easier now to hire a farm sitter because their work will just be to come and assist in some other duties other than the milking. So 
the biggest challenge for the farmer is milk extraction. So once you get over that hurdle, you are better off because now your farm sitter will, will, will and another thing, even if they decide to go, you just ask them, when are you going? Because you have something else to back you up. But if you don't have a milking machine and your farm sitter, for example, what we have experienced in the farm, in the end month, they can just go for three to five days. So you will find that your milk production is erratic. Today is this, today is that production. Another thing, milk tilling. It happens and you can never outsmart your milk sitter. But the milking machine, it has, what usually happens is that they don't extract the full amount of milk from the cow. So they, 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 they can extract up to certain level, then they know at night, all the at night I'll come and extract the rest. So with the milking machines you cannot control because it automatically removes the milk from from the cow. So you cannot control how many liters it, it, it produces. The milkman can control that. They can add or reduce. But with the milking machine you just will add on the issue of time and, uh, and dealing of the milk. So there are even more advantages, but let's look at those for now. As we found out at Matthew's farm, milking machinery are not exclusive to Kaki farmers. What we can surprise you is that the same machine that milks cows is the same machine that milks goats. However, what we change is the milking cluster. When I say the milking cluster, it's where you, uh, the, the, where the, 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 a cow has two teeth, but a, a, a goat has two, a cow has four. So you change to another one which has four, then you do just a few modifications. So our machines can do both, goat and cow. So what you need is just the cluster for goat. So you can buy equipped with cow and goat. Because it's the same machine, it's a, almost the same setting. Yes, so we also have that for dairy farmers, uh, dairy goat farmers. Before one considers buying a milking machine, there are various factors to consider. The first is the location. Well, uh, first of all, you need to have a, a source of power. However, that is not uh, always the case. Some places there is no power, so we go with that. There are milking machines which come with a stationary which come with with a, their own power like a, a small engine which runs the milking machine so for, you can just have power or a power source or a generator so that is let's say it's a disadvantage because you need to have power although even if you don't have power you can you can buy a machine equipped with its own power source well because our machines are uh, for the rich So it, it uses the least amount of power for the efficiency to milk. So it's it's uh, it's it's safe on power. It does not uh, the cost is effective if you compare on all the costs of the dairy. It's just one horsepower motor depends for a single bucket. So it will not consume as much of your power. The milking machine uses the latest technology. The ones we have, they use vacuum. And they rely on atmospheric pressure. So pressure increases its attitude. For example, if you, the pressure in Mombasa is more than the pressure in, on top of Mount Kenya. Basically, on your geography, it's just because of air levels. The more they, they just, the more they pile, the more the pressure is. So, for example, if you take this machine to Mombasa, the pressure is different. If you take it to Kiabu or Mount Kenya, the pressure is different. If it's above 2000, what you, you have to realize is there's less air. 
So to create vacuum is more difficult. Than in Mombasa where there is a lot of air, to create vacuum is easier. So you need a more powerful machine than the one in Mombasa. If you are on top of Mount Kenya, you, you cannot buy. But that, many people don't know that. You cannot buy the same machine if you are in Mombasa or Mount Kenya. You buy a different one. Because the air pressure in Mount Kenya is there is no sufficient there and the machine works by creating a vacuum. So because it has to do a lot of revolutions before it creates sufficient vacuum to milk in Mount Kenya or, or on high altitudes than in Mombasa where there is a lot of air. So before you consider buying a milking machine, you have to consider where is your location because uh, otherwise the, 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 the visions will not be the same in Mombasa, sea level, and above 2000 you, have a more, you need a more powerful, below 2000 you need the average. So we, we usually know where, to, because we take the machines to the customer, we know which one will work where and how we, we work on it. To gain a better understanding of how to use milking machines effectively, Matthew demonstrates to us exactly how. This is where you sit. On and off. off. On and off. Zero to one means where yeah. it's simple, you just sit it on just like a normal seat. And uh, then now we are about to milk this car. What is his name? Jolly. Jolly, we are about to milk Jolly today and uh, we are going to demonstrate modern milking practices whereby we shall show you on how to put in the other and on how to control a set. We are going to demonstrate how the modern farmer is in order to get focus, we should uh, do it. So follow me now as we go ahead and demonstrate on how to milk. We shall have a few things before we start. Make sure that your cow, of course, is there. Then you have uh, these cups. This one is called a foam cup and uh, it has some chemical inside, I'll explain. This is a deep cup, so they are different rows. This is called step one milking procedure. This is where you, before you start milking, and this is step two. What is the step one? Step one is a, a chemical that is used to, treat, uh, to, to kill bacteria and also clean the cow's udder. Step two, this one is very important. You can even omit step one and go to step two. So step one and step two. This is used to close the cows. Uh, the, the, the muscle which is open after milking which remains open for 30 minutes. So we are going to start our procedure with Yoli here. And uh, we are going, of course, to start with step one. So step one, you take your foam cup. Then you push it. There is a foam which comes in the cup. Then you insert each cup. Inside, just like that, you can see it. You push, up, you push it, then you, you just put it like that, like that, like that. And uh, this is to control mastitis. So, because we are looking at the profit, then there is a special tissue, you just wipe it. Why are we using special tissue? It's because we have discovered that uh, those uh, small cloths that you use, you can use for each thing it's all, eh? So that you can you don't press any disease, any disease. That for this you get four special tissues for each seed and you wipe it. Although this is a chemical, no bacteria can survive. So once you wipe it, your cow now is clean, you don't need to use water unless there is a lot of that. The next process is that uh, we are going to the, our machine is clean. We are going to demonstrate on how to clean it just before. So you make sure that the because it uses I'm just arranging it just to show how it works. Uh, then you put it on. Right. Then here you can look up. And uh, you can observe here. Here. You can see the pressure is rising. This is the MLC per head. This is the MLC per head. So it goes to minus one. This is what is recommended for cows. And then you get to a little cluster. Once you get to a little cluster, then you lock this small valve here. 
Then you get uh, to the top, you can bring it closer, a bit closer. Calf bottle. Why do you need a calf bottle? It's because uh, once the cows is, is sucking, it produces saliva, so production start, uh, digestion starts from the mouth because of the saliva. We don't put milk in a bucket. This is what is recommended. Digestion, there's a lot of saliva. Digestion will start from here. There's also a psychological effect. The cow thinks that it is getting the milk from the, the mother. So psychologically, there is no much stress for the cow, and your cow will, uh, your calf will grow uh, better. There are so many advantages of using a calf bottle. As you can see, they, they it's enjoying it. You can meter, you can even measure. You can see the, it's calibrated. This is a, a two liter, one liter, so you can know the amount of milk it's taking. And also, the most important thing about using a calf bottle is that the milk goes to the, there are four stomachs, so rumen or muscle or muscle. So what usually happens? It goes to the second to third stomach, not the first stomach, which is for water. If the cow is facing down, the, the milk goes to the first stomach, stomach, then the process will be longer and your cows will not go. So feeding with this, the milk will go to the right stomach because there is that pushing element because it is facing up. Never give your calves milk when it is facing down. The milk will go to the stomach that is not well developed and your, your, the, the growth of the, of the calf will be slow. So you can see saliva, a lot of saliva. This is for digestion. Digestion will start in the mouth. You can see the way it loves it. So digestion will uh, start in the mouth 